square. What is up, Square Hammers? What is up, YouTube? Today, we are going to be talking about the mighty Dwarven Clans. So, okay, so here I have the rule book. This, obviously, you can see my name is printed across all of these things. This is to protect uh, GW and their... Okay, their IP. Ooh. So, first, if we look at the dwarves, they're a bunch of short little fellas, but they are hardy, and they hit like a truck, but it's more like they're more defensive, and they have all the artillery. So, let's dive in. Don't want to waste any time. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you played some games. Maybe you at least watched some of the battle reports. There's a ton of battle reports all over. A lot of them are behind paywalls, but... Um, it's usually worth it to maybe give a couple bucks to a channel and help them out. So, first, welcome everybody. Who we got watching? Who we got watching? Downvoting people. What's up? Hey, Jonesy. Uh, tried to get Jonesy on here, but he said he was, like, installing a microwave or something. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, Mr. Gunner. You're priming him up? Nice, dude. Okay, so first, we're going to start with Dwarf Lords. They have a couple options, either on foot, on an oath stone, or on, as you can see in the picture right there, they can be carried by some people. Um, this is uh, the White Dwarf, carried by Gotrek and uh, Bugman. And then we just have a, another Dwarf Lord carried by regular two shield bearers. So, Dwarf Lord, King and Thane for characters, those are the options. We got a couple points, 125 and 60. You can see the main difference is the weapon skill, the wound, the initiative, attack, and leadership. So basically all those add by one, and it's an extra 65 points. They start with full plate, which is good. So they're starting with a four up. They're on a 25 mil base. And of course, just like in older editions, they could be given great weapons, crossbows, handguns, O-stone, shield breakers. Now I know the shield breakers, we'll get to that later, but that's on a bigger size now. I think it's, is it, uh, I think it's 60 by 60. No, that's not right. It's um, 50 by 50. So it should take the place of four dwarves, if I'm not mistaken. And look at all their special rules. So they have Ancestral Grudge, which when I scroll down, we'll be able to read that. Dwarven Crafted, Grommel Armor, Grommel Weapons, Hatred, Orcs, and Goblins. So there's no more rolling on the chart. I think that was 8th edition. Was that it? Yeah, it was 8th edition when you had to roll. And then I think if you got like a 6, you hate like the whole, your whole army hates the other whole army, which is insane to me. Um, pricing wise, compared to some other characters, it's not bad. 50 by 50. Thank you, guys. Looks really good in a unit of 20 hammers. Makes a 5 by 4 and a 6 by 4. Totally not ready to join you. That's okay, Jonesy. Uh, you hop on the next one. Um, I probably will do the Empire next or uh, Warriors of Chaos because those were the next two highest that were voted in the poll on the Square Hammer Facebook page. So if you want to at least get your thoughts in and you want to put your two cents and be like, hey, please try this one, we'll do that next. So I'll probably just go down the line and uh, into which ones were the most voted. So you can see they can also get Look at this. So a king can get up to runes up to 125 points. And a thane can get up to 75. And a thane is the one that can uh, become the BSB. So we will be looking at ruins. Ruins. Runes, and you'll be able to see if you can have, like, all of the same combination. Or can you do all three of the same runes, like, per guy? Or is it like how it used to be where you could never have the same weapon or... In like artillery piece could never be the same where you had to have, if you did like the flaming rune, you'd have to have the flaming and accuracy or something. So you couldn't have two uh, artillery pieces, both with the same rune combination. We'll get to that. All right. And they're stubborn and resolute rallying cry. I tried to find rallying cry. Let's see if I can find it right quick for y'all. Rallying cry 175. Hey, look what I'm allowed to show now. Ha <laughs> Rallying Cry, during the command subphase of their turn, if they are not engaged in combat, this character may nominate a single fleeing friendly unit in their command range. That nominated unit immediately makes a rally test. That's awesome. 
If this test has failed, the unit may attempt to rally again as normal during the rally subphase. So with rallying cry, I think I was uh, trying out some armies and another uh, character had rallying cry. But it's basically you get to rally twice. And if you have a musician, I assume you still get the plus one to rally each time. I don't know why you wouldn't. So if they're in within their command range, they get the leadership of the general. If it's only a thane, then they'll go up to 10, which is great. If it's a king, you're already 10, so you're not going to go anywhere. But okay, let's see what Ancestral Grudge does. Let me scroll down and not... There you go. Dwarves never forget to wrong, imagined or otherwise, with lords and thanes being particularly overburdened with inherited grudges. These can never be forgotten, only settled or nurtured. A model with the special rule has the hatred enemy character special rule, meaning it hates all characters in the opposing army. If the, this character joins a unit along beards or hammerers, the unit also gains the special rule. Wow, that's great. Should the character leave the unit or hammerers they should join, the unit loses a special rule. Okay, that's cool. So not only do all dwarves get um, orcs and goblins hatred, but they also, all characters hate enemy characters and basically, if you join the likely two units you will join, hammers. Oh, it's not iron breakers. Hmm. I wonder why not iron breakers. Too, too strong, I guess. I don't know. That's weird. But you're still stubborn, at least right here. Stubborn's really good because stubborn nowadays, what that does is uh, you, can, you can't break. Basically, you will only either give ground or uh, fall back in good order. You might even only give ground. Hold on. Stubborn. Let's confirm it for y'all. I don't want to be speaking lies to the Square Hammer crew. Let's see. Oh, and by the way, uh, we're going to be running in Richmond. The Richmond Open is going to have a GT. It's going to start with 32 players, uh, but just as how Adepticon sold out in 10 minutes, I have a feeling the Richmond Open will still do the same. It's May 4th, 3rd through 5th, I think, but the GT is on Saturday, Sunday, so keep an eye out for that. I will be posting and sharing that. And we'll go over, like, um, I'll probably do another live where I talk about restrictions and army comp and stuff like that. So, the first time you make a test, will automatically fall back in good order instead, even if the unit strength is twice that. Okay, so you're automatically fall back in good order no matter what. You don't have to break a, you don't have to take a break test. It may just, that's great. Okay. So you can either pass if you like just give ground and that's cool, but you could just fall back in good order. Very nice. Very nice. The rule has been, that's a grudge in. Yeah, basically. Okay. So there's ancestral grudge. You can see, I think in other, on other channels, they've gone through and looked at Bretonian characters and, um, whereas basically all the other books. You can see that the Dwarf Lord is actually, so like the the Bretonian Badass and the Warriors of Chaos Lord, those are all, those are both 195 points. But they have an extra wound over these guys and an extra attack over these guys. And I think also an extra strength. So I don't know why they put, Dwarf Kings are no joke. They're not supposed to, I don't know if they just get thrown around by a Baron. Warriors of Chaos Lord, I mean, yeah, probably, but uh, it's it's weird that a human ha is stronger and has more attacks than a dwarf lord. I'm not sure why they decided to do that, uh, but I guess because you get hatred versus all of them. You get MR1, which is great. Grommel, which we'll talk about later. I'll go through all those. Let's see. Scrolling over. So if you put them on an oath stone. Challenges issued by a character with an O stone cannot be refused. So if you build a super tanky um, uh, king or thane, put them on an O stone. Challenges can't be confused or refused. Hopefully, you kill the enemy champion that's likely in that unit. So then the only person that can accept is their character, and you save the enemy character swinging at your basically your basic troopers. In addition, characters with O-Stone in any unit they have joined automatically pass panic checks, no big deal, but cannot choose to flee as a charge reaction. Okay, so basically, you're going up there, you have committed an oath to get there and fight and challenge and glory of, uh, let's say, I don't know, all dwarf kind. Okay, shield bears, so here it is. Oh, y'all can't see that? Oops, I'm sorry. My bad. 
Hey, I didn't see that at all. My mistake. Okay. Shield bearers. So you get three extra wounds. So, oh, look, there's the 60 points. So now you're 185. So you're 10 points less than the basic Baron and Chaos Lord. But you get three extra attacks at weapon skill five, strength four. And now you're going to be uh, seven wounds or six wounds. It's pretty good. And it's a 50 on 50. So that's nice. And they also have Hatred of Goblins, Resolute. We'll look up that. Born Aloft. A model consists of blah, 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 four models, the character, and three loyal retainers occupying a single base to represent this model. Okay, so it just says basically follow split cavalry rules. Gotcha. And you count as heavy infantry. Okay, cool. Oh, if you count as heavy infantry, does it count as a single model? Let me read that one more time. No, it... Single entity. So if it acts as a single entity, I assume that means it acts as a single model. So you'd still have to have, to get a full rank of heavy infantry, you'd still have to have the shield bearers and then three uh, all other heavy infantry beside them to count as a rank. That's what I was thinking in my head. I was trying to go, okay, so if heavy infantry is only four wide, if does he count as one model? Or is it like four? It says not one, but four models. So that's interesting. Y'all see what I'm trying to go through there? Weird. Okay. Which isn't hard for me to update these two. It's just basically two more guys behind them and a little bit wider. So I'll probably just put them on a, a cool base, do something with it. Not exactly sure yet. So that is the Dwarf Lord. All right, let's go to the Anvil of Doom. Anvil is what they used to do. They used to have like bound spells. Basically, the the uh, the Forge Father or the Runesmith is like slamming runes uh, on the Anvil. And it's like powering up the army or it's like um, making a move really quickly. Or I think you could even call down like lightning or something like that back in the day. <clears throat> what should be a new model? Uh, oh, you're talking about a new... Um, yeah, why not? Why not update them? Do you think they need to make a new anvil? I mean, I love the, the old one. It looks sweet. But something new would look cool. But will they make it too big and gaudy? Or will it be like the size of the uh, the old casket? Maybe the size old, old casket of souls? It's pretty sweet. So it's 235 points. It's toughness 7, basically when you're shooting at it, like artillery, with 5 wounds. And in combat, you have 5 strength 4 weapon skill 6 attacks. Not bad. You do count as a war machine. Heavy armor shields. You get up to 100 points. Okay, Grommel Armor, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it lets you reroll once to, uh, failed, um, sorry, you reroll armor saves of one. So, it's pretty nice. It used to be like an extra armor save, I think, but now you just reroll ones. Uh, Grommel Weapons, I don't remember what they do. It might be an extra AP, just like how, uh, Warriors of Chaos have, um, Ensorcelled, uh, weapons, which is an extra AP. I think Grommel Weapons do the same thing. I'll have to check at that. MR3, so you're not going anywhere from taking uh, magic. It's going to be hard for people to cast it on you. Why do you have Skirmisher? Why does an artillery piece have the Skirmisher special rule? Yeah, just remake the same anvil, but in, you know, keep it in resin. Hmm. But I still don't understand Skirmishers with a artillery piece. Is that for line of sight? And movement, maybe? They are unbreakable in ITP, of course. Ancestral Shield. Ancestral Shield! An Anvil of Doom and the Forge Father and Anvil Guard have a 5 up ward against wounds. Okay? So, they don't have full plate, so you're going to have a heavy armor and a shield. So you have a 4 up armor and a 5 up ward. Uh, and you're rerolling ones for armor saves. Not bad, not bad. Scroll down for a movable object. Okay. Every model, every model gets an order. Yeah. Immovable object. Once the anvil has been placed in the battlefield during the deployment, it cannot be moved by its crew. Okay, so I guess for movement, it doesn't matter. So why would you be skirmishers? Is it just line of sight? Interesting. Probably, because if you can't move, you should be able to see everywhere. That makes sense. Oh, note that it can still pivot freely at any time during its turn. There you go. Okay. Now we can see what the anvil can actually cast. Uh, let's go up one more. 
Strike the runes. An Anvil of Doom can cast the following bound spells with a power level of 3. Okay, so they all are a bound spell 3. So you only be able to sell two at the same time. By the way, my guys, my name is Eric Ford, if you haven't noticed by the PDF. But call me blue. I like uh I've got I've had that nickname since I was eight, so it's almost thirty years now. Enchantment, casting value seven or eleven, depending on which you get off. Range twenty four. If this bound spell is cast with a casting level seven or more, the target friendly unit may re roll any failed armor saves. Okay. Lever more, the target may reroll any failed armor saves. Wow, so if you get a 7 plus, you reroll armor saves. If you get an 11 plus, you reroll armor saves and you get an, eight, an extra AP. Oh no, you increase your armor value. Wow, so if you have um, heavy armor, shield, you get this spell off and it's the, bound, it's the big one, you go to a 3 up armor save and you're rerolling fails. That's pretty good. Wait. Uh, uh, power level three. Gotcha. Okay. So then you have the Rune of Hearth and Home. I assume on Iron Breakers, that's amazing. Basically anything in the Dwarf Army, that'll be a huge help because Dwarfs rely on their armor, as they should, because they're not very fast, so they have to be able to take all the shots and not get withered down while they're marching forward. No, they're just gunlining. You're my boy. What's up, Jonesy? Again. Yeah, I do like the names of them. They are cool. Uh, da, da, da. Thank you, Gracchus. Yes, so a runesmith, we'll get to them, but a runesmith is plus one, a rune lord is plus two, and being on the anvil is plus three. You think so? I don't know, uh, Mr. Gunner, because as dwarves, you know, gun lines are usually a focus, so I'd say most dwarves barely, most units of dwarves, 90% of them, don't even make it like halfway across the board, even by the end of the game. You might have two, maybe three blocks of units, but they kind of just get in position ready to counter charge. I don't know if they're actually that far forward. So, Rune of Hearth and Home. Enchantment. Casting seven, range self, which does not mean you only have to cast it on yourselves. Uh, until the start of your next turn sub -phase, start of turn subphase, all friendly dwarf units within 21 inches gain ITP. So that doesn't sound great, but ITP, fear, and terror are very important in this edition. Not only is it the how it used to be where if you charge a terror cause an enemy, you have to, or if you get charged by a terror cause an enemy, you have to take a, a leadership check to see if you flee or can't charge, depending on which one you do. But if you are outnumbered, it's either double or just outnumbered by fear cause an enemy, really messes up your close combat in terms of um the three sections where it's like break fall back in good order or give ground so being outnumbered by fear cause an enemy is pretty important and then also uh taking fear checks so that's good too for combat to see if you um for weapon skill and everything C can you do all three i wonder if you can, if they're bound spells i assume you know all three so if you have it you might as well throw it right Let's see, you have chose which enchantment to cast, though. It won't be hearth. You're not wrong. You're right, not wrong. I know it says NA for a base, but I don't want to... I checked out that thing. 60 mil. Yeah. So the anvil is... Yeah, most people don't take it. Um, at least in older editions, you might see one when you get to like 3,000 points. But at 2,000 points, you really just more, want more bodies on the field or... Um, uh, more artillery. So, it's obviously a support item, support unit. But if there's objectives on the field and you have one in your deployment zone, you just sit that bad boy right on it and you can throw everything else forward, except your artillery, of course. So, Rune of Haste and Urgency. Whoa! You're going to get speedy little dwarves. So, they used to have this. That's casting value 12, which is pretty expensive, and it's conveyance. I don't remember which one that's. Obviously, it's in the movement phase, I would assume. If the target-friendly unit is not fleeing and has already moved during this movement phase, so it's going to be the movement phase, it may immediately move again. So it it doesn't say may march. It doesn't say, like, only move. It just says move again. So I assume that includes marching. So, oh, man, those little teeny feet, instead of marching six inches for one turn, you get to go 12. That's pretty big, especially if you give units vanguard and all that stuff. So you can get in a great position or get out of line of sight of something. It's pretty nice. Or, shoot, even if you 
moved up and you backed up half your movement, you can back up again to make the charge range even further. And since charge ranging or charge ranges is much lower than previous editions, you know, you could pull yourself out of charge range for that. It's pretty good. Not a bad little bait. Rune of Wrath and Ruin. The target enemy suffers 2d6 strength 4 hits, each with AP of 2. So you get a magic missile with range 27. It's weird to see, like, range 27s here and there. Um, I don't know why they determined 27 instead of 30 or 24. I don't get it. Um, gyro Bombers. Oh, my gosh. You know, Gyro Bomber, and it might say once per phase you can drop the bomb. Because if you're able to drop two bombs in a phase, that seems funky, but it could be. But already has been nerfed, haven't they been? Uh, you will see some already has been nerfed, but I think overall it'll be okay. It'll Maybe cannons have been nerfed, but everything else is still good. And a magic missile, which is great. All right, so we don't we don't want to start with slayers. I know, I know. So we're going to go to runesmiths and stuff. Let's uh, transfer over. Uh -huh. So obviously that's for your BSB. You got the two BSBs there. Um, this, I think, came in the box set back in the day. Well, no, this one came in the box set back in the day. This one, I think, was the, it was like a small box that had, um, was it a Lord on Foot and that BSB? And this one? I can't remember. But I know this one was the limited one that was in the big dwarf army box, like the 6th edition big one, I think, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Runesmiths. I think that's one of the next ones. So there's, uh, he's a special character. His name is failing to come to mind at the moment. Um, Y'all help me out. You dwarf players. It's hard to know every single one. Dwarf players. Who is that character? What's his name? He has a name. He's a special character. I can't think of it. Runesmith. Okay. So here we have a runesmith, a slayer, and an engineer. So let's start with the runesmiths. So y'all can see. Here we go. It's funky trying to mess with these things. Okay. Runesmith, 120 points or 65 points. As it was pointed out above, the runesmith is plus one and the rune lord is plus two when casting and dispelling. Okay, weapon skill six, strength four, toughness five. Rune lord, weapon skill six. I don't know if they were weapon skill six back in the day. I should go get my books. Actually, I had planned to get the books, but now I realize I should have brought them up. But three strength four attacks from a casting character is not bad. I know in older editions they used to. Let's see. Wow, that's so good. I think you're going to see a lot of these. Uh, and I will say why in a second. Uh, I guess it's because I already read it. But 25 mil bases. Heavy infantry, you start with heavy armor. So you start with a 4 up or a 5 up. You can get a shield. You can get full plate to go down to a 3 up on foot. Uh, full plate, shield. That's amazing. O stone's only 15 points. But you can get a 3 up armor save with... It's pretty good. Uh, armor. They come with armor bane one. They come with reroll um, ones of armor saves. I think Grommel. I'll have to check it again. I'll have to check. I think Grommel. Well, we'll get to it. Hatred, stubborn, rune lore. But look at Forge Fire. In eighth edition, I think it just gave you AP one. Now look what it does. You join a unit. They gain armor bane two. So that is only on a six to wound. Do you get uh, AP two? But it's still pretty good. It's not what it used to be, which was just um, AP1, but it does give you flaming attacks. And I do expect to see a lot of characters and just as many units as there used to be with regen running around. Like the entire Tomb King's army has regen. So you just put this runesmith or rune lord in there, and hey, there you go. You uh, just shut down the regen of a whole Tomb King army with that one unit. It's pretty good. Uh, so, and you can join them around to any unit, and then that unit gets Forge Fire as well. And can still take 125 and 75 points. It's pretty good. And we go to Slayers of Legend. Now, I'm surprised it doesn't talk about... Uh, hmm. Okay, well, we're just coming back. Slayers! As y'all have heard Alex say this a thousand times, Belgear or Belgar. Thank you. I'm glad someone got it. Points to you. Points to you. You're taking a great weapon on the Rune Lord? Yeah, why not? Seems pretty good. 
Wait, nuh uh. Flaming only turns off regen if they have the flammable? What? That seems dumb. I'm gonna check that out. Uh, flammable, 169. You model with a special rule cannot make a regen saves by a, caused by a flaming attack. Flaming attacks. Cause fear in war beasts and swarms, so no longer in cavalry. I know it used to also, like, it could, uh, it was against cavalry as well. That's cool. Okay, so unless otherwise stated, which it does not state only close combat attacks for uh, Forge Fire, that means, oh my gosh, you can put this guy into a unit of Quirlers or Thunderers, and then those Quirlers and Thunderers get Armor Bane 2 and Flaming Attacks. Ugh. That's pretty gnarly. I like that. Hmm. Because it says flaming attacks both for shooting and close combat. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hmm. Alright, continuing. Continuing on. To the Slayers. Both leadership 10. Both toughness 5. Both only strength 4. See, why is a, ah, a Baron strength 5 but a Demon Slayer is only strength 4? Okay. Uh, only 4 attacks. 130 points. Weapon skill 7. Initiative 5. So it's pretty high initiative for a Dwarf. Obviously, he's not wearing any armor, so he can just run around. May take only one of the following. So you can't have two-hand weapons and a great weapon. And you can't run a magic weapon with a hand weapon to get plus one attack. Um, I did look that up earlier. A demon slayer can get weapons and runes, runes up to... Weapon runes up to 100, and then talismans for 25. So a dragon slayer cannot take tals, uh, talisman runes. Hmm. Don't know if that's how it used to be back in the day. But, okay, they both have Death Blow, Grommel Weapons, Hatred, ITP, Killing Blow, Loner, MR. Okay, they're all the same. Slayer of Demons, Vanguard. Interesting, I wonder if all Slayers just get Vanguard now, if those two by themselves get it. No, it says Loner. I hope they don't have to be alone. That would be... Annoying. Let me look up the rule loner. It would obviously it seems as if they would, right? Logic. Logic tells us this. Loner. Oh, you just can't join a unit without the special rule. Gotcha. And can't be your general. Makes sense. So you're loner, but you're gonna join a unit of other loner slayers? Okay, sure. Runesmiths get all the bound spells right so they can cast one per phase. Yes, that's correct. Gracious or Gracchus. Yep, correct. Okay. Let's see what their special rules are as we go down. Can I get both in at the same time? Slayer of Demons. When this character makes a roll to wound, a four up is always successful regardless of the target's toughness. And that doesn't specifically say towards demons, it just says four up. In addition, each unsaved wound inflicted by the character against an enemy model of the warped spawned special rule, or whose troop type is Behemoth, has multiple wounds too. So Behemoth is like the... Um, it's not large targets. There is a difference. Behemoth is the uh, the bone giant, or I think it's like the Necrolith Colossus now. Uh, so it has to be very... It's supposed to be like a really big thing, not just like a, a dragon. I think dragons might just be large targets. But warp spawn, that's like spawn, obviously. Most a lot of demons. So that's pretty cool. Multiple wounds D3. I'm sure you can also take uh, weapon runes that help you out in that regard. Slayer of Dragons. Okay, so it's a it's weird that they have to state that twice. Why not just have like a slayer rule that just like the ice slayer rule that just says you a four is always successful. Okay, in addition, each unsaved wound inflicted by against an enemy model who is Behemoth. Am I missing something here? Oh, it's because one's the Demon Slayer, one's the Dragon Slayer. Duh. Okay. Interesting. So basically, demons just get Dragon Slayer rule and uh, get affected at verse Warp Spawned. Sounds great. Sounds easy. That's really uh, simplistic. I feel like they could have done that better, but at least had it arranged a little clearer. 
Not that it's not clear. It's just like overstated. So dwarf engineers got the guy to the far left. Now this is also a special character. Who knows it? Who knows him? Who knows him? Why is this doing that? Okay. 50 points for an engineer. You start with heavy weapon or heavy armor. You can take pistols as used to be. You can take a handgun as used to be, but usually you don't do that because you want to use their special rule, which used to not be able to, it depends on the edition. Some editions, just like Empire Engineers, you could shoot and still help the artillery, or either or, depending on the edition. Artillery Master, uh, you can still take runes and all this stuff. Grommel Armor, so you're still one of the ones. You're still stubborn. Stand Back Chief, which we will get to. Let's scroll down a little bit. Artillery Master. Unless this character is fleeing or engaged in combat once per turn during the shooting phase, a friendly quarrelers or... Thunderers or a war machine that is within its command range can re-roll any ones or a single artillery die. Cool. So it's just one, right? Uh, so yeah, it's just one. Okay. So you could have a couple if you have a unit of quarrelers. Rerolling ones isn't bad because uh, quarrelers and thunderers are both hitting on fours. So get in an extra like seventeen. Um, or one in six hits, or seventeen percent chance, whatever it is. Um, but usually those are safe for artillery because that's what that's like a lot of points for you, and that's where a lot of your damage comes in. And you don't want your guys to just blow up. But I'm guessing that there is what is it like the engineering rune, uh, which lets you reroll single artillery dice anyways. So if you have like the um the extra engineering rule rune plus an uh an engineer, you can reroll ones with like an organ gun or see if that hits automatically or not now. And then also reroll a artillery die. Entrenchment used to like make you stubborn, but it seems like everyone's stubborn now. You may trench a single non-character model whose true type is war machine. Okay. You're behind partial cover and defending a low linear obstacle. So partial cover is going to make uh, the enemy minus one to hit for shooting. And a low linear obstacle they used to be like a barricade where uh, like the enemy wouldn't get charging bonus. And I think if you get charged by like chariots and maybe even cavalry, it's uh, considered dangerous or at least difficult for them. I will check that right now. A lot of the rules did carry over, but a lot of them, it is still uh, anyone's guess unless you actually have the rules in front of you. 270. Low linear obstacles. Uh, so it's anything two inches or less. Purposes of, mo purposes of movement, it's counted as difficult terrain. Should a unit be engaged in combat find itself straddling? No, it doesn't matter. The unit behind it. Enemies can charge the defenders as normal, but do not have to physically cross the obstacle, of course. Unless it has the fly special rule. The unit that makes a charge against an enemy defending has to make a disordered charge. Anyone remember disordered charge off the top of their head? Let's see. Charge. Disordered charge. Charging. Disordered charge, 128. You also have to figure out the rule book and all its layout because everything is not what you would be used to and where it should be. Disorder charge. Ooh, you don't gain the initiative bonus on the charge. Interesting. So most artillery for dwarves are going to be probably initiative two. So if you get charged by great weapons and you don't have great weapons yourself as a dwarf, you will likely swing first unless it's like elves or some other crazy stuff. So that's neat, but I think the enemy is most likely going to be going before you anyways because you're initiative two dwarves or you have great weapons. So... Okay, let's go. Let's see. Dwarf Warriors. We are on to the Dwarf Warriors. So here we have basically all the core troops. We have uh, warriors way up there with hand weapon shield. We have warriors with great weapons. Way above up is quarrelers. And then we have some thunderers. Obviously, I did get a new webcam. I don't know if it looks any better. It should be a little bit clearer, but probably... Um, I just took pictures of a couple units to throw it up there, so it's at least uh, a little bit clearer than if I was like holding it right here for y'all to see. 
So only eight points a model. Let me get it better on the screen for y'all. There you go. That should be everything. Weapon skill four, toughness four. Uh, that looks exactly like what it used to be. Were Dwarf Warriors um, leadership eight or nine in eighth edition? Eight or nine last edition. I feel like they were leadership. Man, that is hard. So many editions to run through in your head. I don't know. I don't remember if they were or not. But only eight points isn't bad. You can see the command is only five points per unit. It's very cheap. In eighth edition, basically it was ten points for everybody. And then the champion slash veteran can get uh, runes up to 25 points. One unit per thousand points can have drilled and veteran. Drilled, I believe, is when you can get a... You basically get a free reform before moving, and it doesn't count towards like hurting your movement. So you get a free reform and then march, which is pretty sweet. Um, veteran special rule. Does anyone remember that off the top of their heads? Veteran. Look it up for you. 180. I'll be quick. I do have the PDS, but it's definitely harder to... Um, can't really search very well. Uh, you may re-roll any failed leadership test. It's pretty good. So if you have a, a unit that you want to just put on the flank and not near your BSB, uh, you give them the veteran special rule and you can hold them over there and it counts as if they have the BSB uh, nearby. It's pretty good. Then get up to uh, standard runes, up to 50 points. So one of the... An entertaining army for dwarves is just a whole bunch of foot troops, not much artillery and not much shooting. And we'll see if you can get a whole bunch of units with Vanguard that just push because that's a lot of T4 high armor saves to choose through because they all start with heavy armor. I mean, that's already a five up. You get shields, you get a four up. Um, it's not bad. Or you just give everyone great weapons because you only have a initiative two anyways. You might as well just hit harder. So that's a lot of strength five great weapons coming at you. Shield wall. Let's see if that's in here. I did practice first myself. Hold on, let me see if I can find shield wall. Shield wall 177. I guess it's like one extra armor save. Let's see. Shield wall. Oh, once per game during a turn in which it was charged, a unit with a special rule that is in an array in close order formation and is equipped with and chooses to use shields in the combat may give ground rather than fall back in good order. It's awesome. So if you're trying to set up counter charges or if you just don't want to get pushed off an objective that far, then you can just go back two inches. That's amazing. Okay. Next. Engineers. Oh, I didn't do stand back chief. I'm sorry, guys. Stand back chief. Basically, it's just lookout, sir, but within three inches of a war machine. That's basically what that is. Except lords. Veterans, you reroll the first test. Uh, was it just the first one? Let me check. One second. Hope everyone's doing well. Say hi. Where are you from? I'm in the East Coast in Virginia. Uh, and we're about to explode with the number of players we have here. No, it's just any failed leadership test. It is not just the first test. It's any failed test, Jonesy. That's for one point a model. It's amazing. Amazing. All right. On to long beards. Let's see which picture do I have them in? Gyrocopters. No. Long beards with great weapons. I have them right at the top, straight above. DC Metro, excited. Pick up the Richmond Open ticket. Nice. You're in the Metro? Um, it's hard to remember who uh, the names who are um, typing in YouTube. Do do I actually know you? Do I know you in person? If so, we do have a Mid-Atlantic um, fantasy group chat that you're welcome to join. South Texas, what's up, man? I think, I guess you're pretty still far from North Carolina. What's up? Starbreaker. Yes, you've commented a lot. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Um, I think there is a, um, I think Brawler Bash. Oh, Brawler Bash is coming back. I don't know if y'all remember that in the Carolinas. Let's get this a little better so y'all can see. There we go. Long beards. 12 points a model, so four more points than the Warrior. You get an extra weapon skill and an extra strength. 
Okay. So basically two points for a weapon skill, two points for a strength. Not bad. You get Grommel weapons, which is nice. You get Venerable. I'll have to check what that is. Oh, look. It's right below at the bottom. So I'll look, yep, let y'all see it. <clears throat> Units, which is what they used to do. It's like, oh, look at the old guys nearby. We don't want to um, flee in front of our uh, veterans, basically. So you get six-inch reroll any failed panic check. That's great. Six points per command. I don't know why they're doing this. It's so weird. Um, great weapons, one point. Shields, one point. You don't have Grommel armor. You have Grommel weapons. So as as a dwarf player, most armies will probably go. Uh, you can see they're all heavy infantry, at least so far. Uh, the highlight is great with my name everywhere. So that means you only have to be four wide to count as a rank. So you might just see a lot of four by four uh, dwarf units. So just sixteen dudes or fifteen in the character, and then just a bunch of artillery and guns. Hmm. We're gonna have to continue to see. What other rune for weapons and talismans you can actually combo up here? Whirlers and Thunderers. Nine points for a crossbow, ten points for a handgun. Everything's the same across the board. Threes across the board, T4. Crappy initiative, low attacks. Both They start with heavy armor, which is great. You can give them all shields for one point. Why not? If you're not taking any warriors or longbeards, Maybe you take great weapons just so you can actually have some punch back if you did get charged by something with higher strength or, you know, that you think you're going to be able to take the hit and you might as well, like, slap back at them. It's not bad. Five points for uh, command. A veteran can either take a pistol. I don't know why you would ever give up a crossbow or a handgun for a pistol. But brace of pistols, sure. Um... You lose the shots at longer range, but as they get closer, Dwarven Crafted. Now that is, Dwarven Crafted now it used to let you reroll ones to hit, but now all it means is you just don't take the additional minus one for standing and shooting. So I think I'd rather have the reroll ones to hit for the multiple turns of you coming closer to me than the just the not minus one when you, uh, I stand and shoot, but that's just me. Oh, you joined the Discord? What's up, man? No, I found your stream on Beltway Gamers. Awesome. Okay. Um, message me on Discord or Squarehammer on Facebook, and I'll uh, get you in there. Texas. Blah, blah, blah. Drilled may be really good for dwarf combat armies. Marching column, your way up there, and then you're stubborn and can reform in combat. Yeah, really good. It's true. And your rune sport, uh, runesmith can help you double move. Yep. <sighs> it's going to be interesting. Close order, Dwarven Crafted. Okay, we've got all that. So I think for... They don't... Obviously, um, crossbows and handguns don't have um, volley fire. So you might just see... It says... I mean, what's weird is, look. In older editions, you only have to... You have units of five. And there's no... This is the problem. I know everyone has seen that meme um, gyrocopter list going around. You could do that. You could also just take, like, five, like, I don't know, 35-man units of Quirlers and Thunderers. Um, there's no limit. You, there's no limit on how many um, units you can take. So, I don't know. So, I think what one of our uh, army list comp things we're going to do is uh, rule of three. So, you can't have more than three units of Quirlers. You can't have more than three units of Thunderers. Same with Gyrocopters and all that other shenanigans. Because... We don't want, if you're playing a big GT, the meta is to try and win the GT, right? Be best general or a renaissance man, what have you. And if running 30 units of five helps you win, you're going to see people do that. There's always, in big GTs, there's always like fluffy players, uh, just veterans who enjoy the game but make a strong list. And then you have the tryhards who are building like the strongest list they can. And I have no problem with any of them because it's a tournament and there's other prizes other than just best general and what a best painted, all that stuff. But the community I've been trying to build, at least locally, is it's okay to have try hard players, but we want to limit the scope of how busted you can make an army. So the person who is playing more of a fluffy list 
can still have a chance in terms of list on list. Like you might still get walloped because you're not as competitive trying to learn the rules and gotchas, not gotchas, but gamey stuff. But at least list wise, you can have, it's more enjoyable. You don't just get just like hammered, haha, every single game. You at least can get some points. Okay. Quirlers, Thunderers. Now we go to. And we will go to. Uh, actually, I guess y'all already probably know what the strength and AP of all the guns and stuff are. But remember, you can put a Runesmith inside your um, Quirlers and Handgunners to give them Armor Bane too. So any sixes to wound is an additional Armor Bane on top of what they already have for AP. And they have Flaming Attacks. So it's pretty, pretty gnarly. So a Ranger is 11 points. Heavy arm just starts with heavy armor, which is everything starts with heavy armor. In WAP, I think you have a lot of them start with light, and you have to pay for it. Uh, you can still flood the board with a whole bunch of low dwarves, low armor save dwarves. Throwing axes, or you can take remake replace crossbows. So they start with crossbows, which is cool. I think. Hold on, let me switch. Wait, why did I go to long beards? Oh, it's because there you go. Uh, artillery, where are you at? Rangers. Oh, here we go. So we have Rangers up here. I have one with a great weapon. Can they take great weapons? They can. Good. And then a crossbow guy. Those guys, they all have capes. So I all the models for dwarves that have is capes, I use them um, as my Rangers. Let's see. You get six points per command. Place their pistol. Brace of pistol. Seems good. Scouts and skirmishers, which is nice. Move through cover, which is great. Just they can't go, you know, over long distances. But in short distances, watch out. Weapon skill 4 and ballistic skill 4. BS4 is really good with throwing axes because I assume throwing axes are what they used to be. Hey, let's look it up. I got the book right here. Throwing axes. It used to be like strength plus 1 of the user. Oh, yeah, they're going to be under weapons. Uh, throwing weapons, 219. I hope you all are as excited as I am. Like, the rules come out for everyone in uh, less than a week now. I think some countries even have already released stuff. Uh, but I'm excited, guys. This is going to be great. I'm doing demos at Battlegrounds on the 27th, just as a reminder. So Throwing Axe is range 9, strength plus 1. So they will be strength 4 axes. There's no AP. Hmm. Don't know. Oh my gosh, a crossbow. Oh, oh, let me say this real quick. Uh, the crossbows and handgunners, or handguns, are no longer move or fire. But if you move, normally ranged weapons and ranged units are minus one when they move and shoot. Since they compensated getting rid of move or fire, you now are at minus two to shoot. So your BS uh, three dwarves that hit on fours are going to be hitting on sixes. But you can at least back up and still hit on sixes. It's still something. But it's weird because crossbows are armor bane 2 already. So that means with a runesmith, there'd be armor bane 4. That's disgusting. Hold on. Let me go up to. I want to check this real quick. Runesmith. See to the right. Or no, he's up one more, I think. Runesmith. Wow. So your crossbows can be armor bane 4. That's disgusting. And when you look at handguns, they're basically what they used to be. So that rule that lets you move and be minus two and still shoot is called ponderous. Ponderous. So you range 24 with a handgun, strength 4, AP 1, and armor bane 1. So a handgun is going to be minus 1 AP, armor bane 3 with a runesmith. But shooting is kind of a trap for most armies. Like basic ranged units, you can pick off some stuff here and there. So you don't want to max it out too much. And back down to rangers. What was I looking up? We got resolute. Uh, I believe resolute, it just means what it used to mean, where you, if you are within, you can't be march blocked, basically. I will confirm that for y'all. It's not in the main rule book under R. All right, we're going to look that up later then. But I think that's what it means. It's like you don't care because y'all are, I guess, well-trained, or you just you don't care about giving up ground is what dwarves do. MR1, which is great. 11 points. Only unit of five, you know, you can just harass a whole bunch of stuff with that and make other people take march block checks. It's pretty good. 
and you give a guy pistols, which is nice. Oop, to the right, actually. Hammerers. All right, so we'll go to hammerers. It's a trap, right? Death and gaming. Gaming, I'm telling you. Hammerers we have right here. There's a little unit of them. 16 points a model. I think a Warrior of Chaos is like 13. Something like that. I think that's right. So for three more points, you have the same weapon skills, same strength, same toughness. Uh, one less initiative. And hammerers. You only have one attack as a hammer. In 8th edition, you used to have two. So you only have one attack now. And you have great hammers, not just hammers. Or a great weapon. You have great hammers. And we'll see what that does. You have heavy armor. You give them shields, which as many points as they cost, you want them to not get shot up across the field because that might be one of my prime targets uh, if you have them on the field and you have infantry. Seven points for command. You can get drilled and veteran. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't go to the uh, army composition. I will go to that after I look up hammers. For, or maybe I'll, you know what? We'll do the whole army list, then look at army comp so you can see what you can actually do. And the champions can get 25 points of weapon runes and 25 points of talisman runes. Talismanic. Talisman. I'm just going to say talisman. Rommel, all that other stuff. Royal Guard, Shield Wall, Stoic Defenders. That's going to be below. And Stubborn, as they should be. Royal Guard, I think they used to be, they used to be like Unbreakable. Let's see. One less. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. I'll go down one more. All right, hold on. Make sure so y'all can see this. Why is this not working? Hold on. There we go. And voila. Now y'all can see it. Okay. So, Royal Guard. Hammer's duty is a sacred thing and bound by oath. They will fight to the death to protect their royal blood. For the leader of the throng, Hammer will gladly give their life rather than face the dishonor of failure. Or if you do fail and you don't die, you're going to be a slayer. The army may include one unit of Hammers for every king and or thane it includes. A model in this unit of Hammers that has been joined by a king or thane can issue and accept challenges. Okay, so you can always challenge as if it's like a character or as a champion. And that's it. So you don't become unbreak unbreakable or anything like that. You just get, uh, you're already stubborn, but then you can just always accept challenges, which is amazing against uh, like a Warriors of Chaos army or another army that always has to issue challenges because you can just always soak those wounds up just by one, one guy. Stoic Defenders. During a turn in which it was charged by the enemy. Oh, Interesting. During a turn in which it was charged by the enemy, a model with a special rule gains plus one modifier to its initiative and its attacks. So if you remember what great weapons do... Oh, wow. And they're not... They don't strike last. Whoa! Great. Okay, that's really good. Hammer's looking good already. Great weapons. Your strength plus two, AP two, armor bane two, magic attacks. Really? They all have magic attacks? It's interesting. Michael, yes, I will explain ally contingent later. Banner of Confusion plus Hammers gives enemy disordered charge auto take. That's pretty good. Yeah, Richard, it is a check in the old world. It's not just automatic. It is a leadership check, just like it was in 8th edition, because in older editions, it was too strong just to move like a flyer next to you, and you can only move half, like four or five, six inches. It's, it, was too, it was too mean. But that's really good. So, what's their initiative? Let's go back up. Let me move this back down. One second. And their initiative three. So, when you get charged, you're initiative four. With effectively a great weapon that doesn't strike last. And you have two attacks apiece now. I don't know about y'all, but that's pretty good. <laughs> so, you want to get charged. You don't want to get shot. You want to rush across the field, and you want to get charged. At least just by one unit, right? Just by one unit. Hmm. What? That's a pretty. That's a. That's a, that is an OP hammers, and they're magic. What? Huh. Sorry, I'm just. I'm thinking. Hold on. So it'll be initiative four. So if okay, you want to get charged if the enemy has great weapons, because. 
what great weapons do now is you makes you strike last initiative one, but I think modifiers like charging and stuff, you still add to it. So if you charge with the great weapon and you go at least three inches, you're going to be initiative four. So actually in this case, you go at the same time. But at least you have two attacks apiece at strength six. Weapon skill, what, five, right? I think the weapon skill five. Is that right? Weapon skill five. Strength six, AP two. Magic attacks? That's pretty good, guys. That's pretty good. And I think warp... Is it warp charged or warp something that uh, you don't get your ward save against magic attacks? I'll have to look that up. Warp spawned, I think it is. I don't think you get your ward save versus magic attacks. So that's... That's pretty good. Okay, so hammers is pretty nice. Um... Rune of Confusion. Okay, I'm sure that's been talked about in other channels. So thank you all for sitting with this in here with me as I review it myself. I've run an army of them, but I only made it 1,500 points, and I took basically the basic stuff just so I could test out some things. So Iron Breakers. Oh, move it over for y'all. 15 points a model, so one less than a hammer. Same weapon skills, strength, toughness. Same. Everything's the same except one less initiative. You start with full plate and a shield, so you're going to have a four-up armor save. And you have Grommel armor, so you're rerolling ones that fail, which they all, always fail. You can still get the brace of uh, Drake fire pistols and, or a Drake gun for 10 points. 10 points to give them these items. Okay. Command are seven points apiece. You can take the Cinder Blast Bombs. Obviously, those are awesome. They're, they're fun. Most people don't take them. It's usually too expensive. But they're only 15 points, maybe. And for every 1,000 points, you can either have drilled and you get a standard. Runes of Protection. Let's see what that is. So, wow. So, I'll scroll down for you all to read it with me. Uh, you all see everything? Almost. Almost. Nope. One second. Got to do this again. Hold on. Wait a minute. Sorry that I can't get it perfectly. There we go. Okay. Runes of Protection. You have a 6-up ward against non-magical attacks. So you have a 4-up armor, 6-up ward versus non-magic. You're rerolling ones. Pretty nice. So the champion can either get a Strength 5, AP 1, Armor Bane 2, Dwarven Crafted, Flaming Attacks, Multiple Shots, Quick Shot, or in combat, it gives you an extra attack, but it requires two hands. And strength four. Not bad, but then you lose the shield. And if you expect to be uh, focused out in combat by the enemy, because you can still attack, and like in 8th edition, you can attack champions directly. Uh, wait, what? Hold on. Hold up. It's weird that you give them a Drake gun. That just seems confusing to me. I'm okay with it. I'm just surprised. Range 18, strength 5, arm bay 2, creep blah, blah, blah. Nothing great. Usually you don't do that. It's usually too expensive, and it's not really worth one extra one guy shooting. But the bombs... The bombs are described below here, so we're going to get to that now. Cinder Blast Bombs. Range 8, strength 5, AP 1, yada, yada, yada. A unit hit by it suffers D6 plus 1 hits. That's pretty nice. Uh, what is the ballistic skill of an Iron Breaker? I'm guessing it's going to be four. It's only three. So on a four up, does it have quick shot? It does. So I think quick shot means you ignore the minus one penalty. Uh, maybe not. So you might only hit on a five if you're getting charged. Obviously, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, not bad. They're still stubborn, which is nice. You have a great armor save. And you can make them... I don't know. I don't know if I would take Iron Breakers. Like, why not just take more Hammers? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I would just take more Hammers in this case. It is nice to have full plate. And just like older editions, Hammers could not take the full plate. They only had heavy armor. It's pretty nice. Let's see. You got a three up save, full plate, and shield is a four up adds one. 
Was I saying four? Yeah, you get a three-up save, rerolling once. Wait, why are you saying two plus reroll? Oh, with the bounce spell. Yeah, with the bounce spell. That's true. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so maybe. Usually in older editions, I would take one of each because I liked fluffy lists sometimes. I didn't usually spam the really good stuff. Unless I was doing Ard Boys or something. That's different, guys. Ard Boys is very different than regular casual play. So, Iron Drakes. 15 points. These are the guys with, like... Uh, hold on, let's get to them. There they are. Right there. What they used to do is you have some stupid runes on them where it's like you have to half your charge and or minus your movement from charges. It's gross. So we will get to that. Iron Drakes. BS4, Champions BS5. Six points for Command. The Iron Warden, which is the champion. It is cool that they gave all the champions. I think they, I don't know if, I know WAP did that. I don't, Warhammer's Armies Project. I don't know, excuse me. I don't know if uh, other editions did that, where they name the champion like something special instead of just saying champion. But you can get the Troll Hammer Torpedo. It's definitely fun to watch those in uh, Total War, where you see all the flame shots, or if you do the Torpedo unit, because the whole unit could be shoot torpedoes, which are really good versus large targets. Or bigger, large units, I think is what it's called in um, uh, Total War. Drilled, they can get drilled, which is nice. They can get standard, up to 50 points of runes. Rune of Warding. Scroll down for y'all. Okay. So you have a 5-up ward versus uh, flaming attacks. It doesn't say non-magical or anything. It just says flaming attacks. So versus flaming, you get a 5-up ward. Uh, does he start with that? So it's weird. Like, I have to go look at the Iron Breakers. Hopefully they're on the same page when you get the book. Because then you have to come over here and look at the Drake gun to see what they shoot. So it's range 18, strength 5, AP 1, armor bane 2, dwarven crafted, which means you just don't minus 1 when you um, uh, stand, and, um, stand and shoot. Quick shot. I'm going to have to look up quick shot. I haven't used a unit with that yet, so... Scroll up. Have to see here. Let's see what's quick shot. Can someone tell it to me before I even look it up? Probably not, because I'm already there. And there's a little bit of delay. So ha ha ha. You do not suffer minus one for moving and shooting. In addition, they can stand and shoot regardless how close you are. That's great. So you can move and shoot. Doesn't say march and shoot. So you can move three inches, still shoot eighteen inches. So you have a, effectively a range of twenty one inches but you still will suffer the long range penalty. But then you can just probably get like three or four, depending on what's charging you or moving to you, at least two turns of shooting plus a stand and shoot. And then who knows what the runes do. So let's go to the troll hammer torpedo range 24 strength, eight AP three dwarven crafted flaming and multiple wounds D three. So not bad if you're fighting ogres, trolls, uh, any large target because strength eight will basically wound anything on twos without magic buff. And, you know, maybe there's one or two units that are that tough, but pretty good. Question. If your iron breakers have two detachments of iron drakes, can both detachment, what's it say? Can both stand and shoot? Oh, okay. Um, if your Iron Breakers have two detachments. Oh my gosh, thank you for pointing that out. I didn't even notice the detachment rule there. What? They get the detachment rule? Thank you for pointing that out about the Iron Drakes. That seems good. I can't believe they have detachment. That's disgusting. Regimental detachment, supporting actions. We'll just go to 283. 283. A detachment can only attempt... Blah, 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 blah. When an en I'll answer that for you. Give me a second. Seems like it. When an enemy unit declares a charge against a regimental unit, and if that regimental unit does not flee... So what's a regimental unit in dwarves? Creating a regimental unit. I have to read this whole section, so hold on. Give me a second. 
Create a regimental unit when making real in your list. Simply create a unit with the regimental special. Okay. Five models to a maximum of half, which is like what it used to be for Empire back in the day. Detachment cannot include any command. I don't see why not. Iron Breakers are the regimental unit. Does it, where does it say that? Why do they have to be? Oh. Oh, chat. Oh, chat. Ugh. So much. It was hidden by the. Uh, it was hidden by the red. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That's pretty sick. I'm gonna like trying that combo out. Dwarves getting an attachment. How's it make you feel, Jonesy? Hope you're still watching this. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you charge against the um, Iron Breakers, the Iron Drakes can uh, declare a reaction against you. And why not stand and shoot? Hmm. They both can get pretty pricey, though. They can get very pricey pretty quick. It's pretty sweet, though. Okay, let's go to the next. Let's see if next we have miners, I think. Miners, miners. Miners, not miners. Uh, miners straight above. Lots of candles on their heads to see through the... You're uh, Chris Jones. Everyone gets attachments. Guess everyone wants to be cool like Empire. <laughs> and I'm I gotta take a drink. Hold on. <sighs> I can't show you what I'm drinking. All right, miners, twelve points. Toughness four, weapons go four. They start with great weapons and heavy armor. They can take blasting charges, which y'all can see right below, which is range six, strength three. Armor Bane 1, Flame Attacks, and Quick Shot, which is great, because that means they can move and shoot. Uh, they have Ambushers, which is still just coming off the table edge. Is it still a 3-up? Three 3-up three by turn 2? I'm guessing so. I've read the rules, but you just get stuff confused, and I have to read this like a thousand times. No, on a 4-up. Okay. And I think it was 8th edition, it was a 3-up. Um, edge of the Battlefield... Yep, not within eight inches. Oh man, they didn't clarify this for ambushers. Okay. Gunner, I can't tell you. Secret, secret. Uh from the beginning of the show. So I hope that under the reinforcement section, it talks about when you get placed, you can't be placed further off the table edge. Like your first model furthest away from the edge can't be placed further than your uh, march move. So hopefully the miners can't be placed more than six inches up off the edge of the board. Because it says you may be placed on the edge of the battlefield. Nowhere does it say you can't be like six by one and then you're just in marching order. Or sorry, one by six. Um, oh, and then you automatically come in turn five. But if you don't come until turn five, that's kind of bad. Okay. You start with the blasting charge, which is great. I'm guessing the steam drill, what it used to do. Let's see what's it cost. It costs 20 points for the steam drill. Command is six points apiece. And gives you furious charge. That's awesome. So strength plus three, so it's better than a great weapon. So you're gonna be strength six, AP three. Unit of minor sudden reserve. Steam drill it may reroll the D6. That's awesome. Okay. So let's look up furious charge. Sounds like you get plus one attack with it. I will check. If you've ever seen... Um, oh my gosh, I just forgot what it's called. What's the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, they remade it with like uh, the Australian guy. Oh, man. Oh, someone help me. It's on Mars. Uh, it's like they pretend his brain, he's in a simulation. Oh, man. Someone help me. Tell me, please. Jonesy built like a lizard. <laughs> that is messed up. Can't believe you said total recall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. I can't believe you caused that's messed up. <laughs> and you can't show us a job. Uh, well, Warriors of Chaos busted when I f played them the other day. Why were they? Why did they feel busted the other day? 
get your ass to Mars. Yeah. Why did Words of Chaos feel busted the other day? Chimera's got super nerfed. They suck now. They were amazing in 8th edition, but I think you just leave them at home. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, Steam Drill's great. Strike last. Strength 6 minus... But it's only it's only one wound. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to look at Furious Charge. Hold on. Da -da -da. So if you made a charge and you moved three or more, you get plus one attack. So basically your prospector on the charge is likely going to have uh, three attacks. Three attacks for weapon skill four, wounding on twos. So most artillery is going to be weapon skill three or four. Um, so you're hit with one or two attacks, and you're basically wound with one or two attacks at AP three. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, next. Let's see what we got. Slayers. <laughs> it's okay, Jonesy. Uh, I don't know where he's located. Death and Gaming, was that uh, was that you in Texas? Was that you in Texas? It might have been. I can't remember. Also, okay, let's see. Champs seem strong. Yes, they are. I can never fit miners in their list. I completely agree. Uh... I do like to take one unit of them. How many? Can you take a unit of five? That'd be nice. Hey, yeah, you can take a unit of five of them. Nothing wrong with a unit of five. Just come out and be annoying. I think they used to be minimum ten. I think. So just take a unit of five just to be annoying to a piece of artillery, and you will likely kill that piece of artillery, and it's not expensive. It's what? 60 points for five of them. So 66 plus a steam drill. Uh, you don't even have to do full command. You can just do the champion. So 86 points. I don't think you need to give them any of the close order, or sorry, um, uh, veteran or anything like that. So it's not it's not very expensive. Played in my basement. Oh. Well, hello there. Wait, you're. Oh, now. Gotcha. I forgot you made that as a YouTube. What's up, dude? So, uh, Jonesy, now you know why you were insulted and called a lizard, because you should now know who Death and Gaming is. Pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Dragon Ogres are really good. You're right. But you haven't seen the new rules yet, so it's fine. Um, but I guess now you have. I guess now you have, so it's cool. Okay. Slayers. Uh, 12 points a model. Seems good. Toughness 4, weapon skill 4, weapon skill 5 for a giant slayer. Initiative 2 and 3. Great weapons are 2 points a model. Hand weapons are 1 point a model. Standard bearers, all that stuff. <clears throat> Death blow, which is like when they die, they get basically get attacks at you. MR2, which is nice. Motley crew with an asterisk. That's interesting. Hold on. Let's do... I can't do that. No. Motley Crew with an asterisk. That's going to... Where is that? Is that in the rule book? Motley Crew? Motley Crew. That's hilarious. Motley Crew, it is. <laughs> 174. Let's see where we go. Motley crew, units with a special rule may include models of the same type that are equipped differently to one another and or models of different types that fight together in a single unit. If necessary, an army entry for such units will be accompanied by a brief explanation of the unit's composition. Sounds about right. Okay. Um, Death Bro, Hatred, Loner. So that means they can also be joined by the other guys. Open Order, Resolute, Unbreakable, as they should be. Uh, oops. Hold on. I'll scroll down. Y'all can read. Um, these real quick. Read them to yourselves. Be right back. Blah, 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 blah.
coming back. Coming back. Ah, okay. We're gonna gyro bombers? Oh no, I hit the troll slayer. No. Okay. Uh, so fight me. Any character special rule can issue challenges in the same manner as a character. Okay, so just like the hammers, you can issue challenges. Um, uh, forever. Slayer. Uh, you always win on a four up, regardless of toughness, which is basically what it should be. And we're going to not do Gyrobamas first. We're going to go to Gyrocopters. And where is the it's artillery? Where's the bombers? There we go. Gyrocopter. This is the one that came out. I don't think it was 7th edition. I think it was 8th edition. The 6th and 7th edition one is the metal one with like the, um, the fins that everyone hated because they broke off all the time. So Gyrocopter, only 60 points, and this is where you saw the list with like 8 or 10 of each of these, something stupid. So you have to limit that because it is too abusive and it's not fun to play against. As you can see, a unit size is 1 to 6. So you could still take 18 of these buggers, but they all, but they all have to be in the same unit. But you're, that's obviously way too many points. They have full plate armor, so they have a 4-up armor save. And they start with the steam gun, which is back to its gnarly stuff of being strength 3 and AP 1. Mm, you can upgrade to the brimstone gun for 5 and the clatter gun for 10. They have the dive bomb, so I think that's a once per game thing, which as you can see right here it is once per game. They have impact hits, so you're going to get D3 impact hits at strength 4. So if you felt like charging this into like a fast cav unit or a unit of 5 annoying skirmishers or something, you could kill a couple on the charge, and then you still have two attacks, so you might win combat there. You have Vanguard and Skirmishers, MR1, Swift Stride, which makes sense because in Fly 9, Fire and Flee is great, but I don't think you, you can't fire and flee with a breath weapon, so uh, plan not to be doing that. So let me scroll down, and y'all can see what the special rules are and the weapons. Excellent. And TNG is clearly Kelsey. Okay, so dive bomb. Once per game, you can dive bomb against a single enemy unit not engaged. Basically, you have to move over that unit, and you drop. Use the unit suffers D six strength three attacks with AP one. So, uh, if you have fly, can you march and shoot? I think in eighth edition they got rid of that, so you could only move and shoot stuff like that. Unless you have, can skirmishers march and shoot? Maybe that's why the rangers have it above or whatever uh, unit we were talking about earlier. Skirmishers, 177, 184. Skirmishers won't be here. See, look at that. In Skirmishers, it says, may adopt a Skirmish formation as described on 184. So why not only have it on 184? Okay. Should be able to march and shoot. March and shooting. Skirmishers and shooting. Shoot in any direction. So they do have 360 line of sight, which is great. Individual models do block line of sight. Get free pivots without penalty. Where does it say? I don't see where you can march and shoot. Enemy fire? No, it's minus one hit. So I don't think you can march and shoot. Normal move, or can you fly and march over them to do a dive? All it says is the unit must move by flying over the enemy unit. So it doesn't say um, you can't march, so I would assume you can. Because only moving 9 inches and then dropping a bomb doesn't seem very great. Moving 18 is obviously better, but nowhere does it say you can march and shoot as a skirmisher. I know Fast Cav used to be able to do that, so hopefully they still can, which I'm guessing they can. Uh, dropping a bomb, so it's only D6 strength 3 with AP 1. Not great, but it's basically a free drop, and it doesn't look like there's a single misfire. Well, sorry, if you do roll a 1, you suffer a wound, which isn't bad. Uh, let's see, you have the Brimstone Gun, which is range 18, strength 5, AP 2. Dwarven crafted, so not the minus 1 for standing and shooting. Multiple shots, D3 plus 1. Ah, so I thought it was D3 when I was reading it before. So D3 plus one's nice. So minimum of uh, two, maximum of four shots. Quick shot, so you don't suffer from moving and shooting. 
Uh, now it counts as a it counts as monsters cavalry, so I assume you do suffer minus one for multiple shots. Like artillery used to not be able to or used to not suffer because it's like that's what they're meant for. Uh, can monstrous cavalry join normal cavalry units in the old world? Why? What are you thinking for that? Well, hello, Canadian Big Mac. I don't know. Our challenge is different than in WAP because their challenges can be used to escape the back with the wizard. Usually it's better not to challenge and just hit the wizard. Um, well, right now, uh, in WAP, you can't challenge with champions. So it's basically only characters that can make and accept challenges unless you have a unit like Grail Knights or Hammers, you know, have something like that. Yeah, you should be able to decline and be sent to the back. But I think... So you make the challenge, the opponent accepts with whoever they want, or they decline. But when you decline, I think the opponent gets to choose who they send to the back. Uh, I'll have to confirm that, but at the moment, we're just going to talk about dwarves. But I will look that up for you. Yeah, so you still get the minus one. Got it. Okay. So the clatter gun is strength four, AP one, range 24, armor bane one, multiple shots D6 with quick shot, <clears throat> and move and shoot. Move and shoot. Why does that list move and shoot when the brimstone gun does not? Does that mean you can't move and shoot the brimstone gun? That doesn't make any sense to me. Why would that be a thing? Let's move or shoot is something. Move and shoot is something different. Oh, so move and shoot means if even if you marched this turn. That's cool. So, oh, okay. So the... Uh, gyrocopter with a clatter gun can march 18 inches and still shoot D6 shots. When the brimstone gun, you can only move 9 inches and shoot your D3 plus 1. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure which is better overall. What's your ballistic skill? 3? Your BS3? It's interesting that they're just strength 4 base. I guess it's just the strength of for the impact hits to help you out. Because they're different. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Uh, I don't know which one I like more. Obviously, it's very dependent on what army you're fighting. Because if you're fighting a whole bunch of, let's just say, Chaos Warriors or other dwarves, you might just want the Strength 5 AP2 because you're wounding everything on threes. And then uh, AP2 will start chopping through armor. Hmm. But then you're also wounding Toughness 3 on twos. So like all elves and all humans, mostly you're wounding on twos. It's only D3 plus one. You lose six inches in range, and you lose a uh, higher variance for um, shots. I don't know. That is that is a conundrum. Take one of both. Hey, look at that. We did it. Or, hey, look, it's a unit of six. Now, do they all have to take? Any may replace a steam gun. So you could have a unit with multi either or? Any gyrocopter may replace a steam gun with one of the following. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Okay. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. All right. Y'all tell me. Gyro Bomber. Let me get it on the whole screen. Steam Gun seems better. The Steam Gun's still good. It's still strength three. Like, what it used to be is just the eight-inch template that, like, just hits everyone in it, so... But it doesn't say you can march and shoot it, so you can only move and shoot that. Actually, unless... Let me look up Breath Weapon. Breath Weapon, you might be able to march and shoot. Let's check. 166. 166. Breath Weapon. Once, once per round. Uh, it doesn't say anything about being able to march and shoot with a Breath Weapon. can't stand and shoot with it or when you're in combat so you can't breath weapon in combat like i think you used to be able to in eight you could like choose either or but it doesn't say you can march and shoot so you can only move and shoot that well thank you gunner i appreciate that puts on cloak of beards what's going on what's up dude taladrian taladrian that sounds elfish what are you doing here what are you doing here pointy ear boy okay uh, gyro Bomber, 95 points, so it's uh, 35 more points than the Gyrocopter. Also has full plate, full plate, 
starts with the steam gun. You can get both of the guns we, list, we looked at before, but it has an extra wound and I think an extra attack. Nope, just has an extra wound. So you're paying 35 points. What are you paying 35 points for? Same toughness, one extra wound. So basically it's the bombing run. Don't know if that's going to be worth 35 extra points. But we will check. It does have an extra plus one for the impact hits. It's only flying eight. It's not flying nine. Bombing run. Wish I had uh, some Maverick music going on right now. Some Top Gun. This model may perform a bombing run against a single enemy unit that is not engaged in combat. So it's the same as before. But I think the other one is one use only. This one I think can do it every turn. Let me scroll to the left for y'all. Once per game. Okay. So, and the other one is just a gyrocopter. Is uh, was a D6 strength 3 AP1. This one. Let's see. Roll on the table. It's not a template. I think in WAP it's a template. So maybe even 8th edition. In here. Oops, sorry guys. Don't worry, I'm paying attention. If you roll a 1, you prematurely detonate. Some people just have that kind of dysfunction. So, uh, it bombs. This model loses a single wound. So you just lose a single wound. A dud. The enemy unit suffers a single wound. So what's interesting at that, about that, it just says you suffer a single wound. It doesn't say no AP. It doesn't say you don't get a ward or a regen or anything like that. So I assume you still get that. I mean, since it doesn't say you don't, I assume you would because you just take it. But it says you lose a single wound. It doesn't say takes a single wound. What do you all think? Yeah, play the Top Gun thing, or the, um, uh, not Charge of the Valkyries, with all the uh, helicopters and stuff. Uh, what do y'all think? It says the, on a, on a two, it says the enemy unit gosh, loses a single wound. It doesn't say suffers a single wound. It says loses one. Yeah, that's gonna, they're gonna have to clarify that. That's interesting. Okay, a three to four, direct hit! Now you place the template and uh, scatters D6, find a position, anyone. So it's a strength four AP one large blast. Not bad. You should expect that most of the time. Strength four AP one large blast, which is pretty good when you're, if you can, you march and do it. Uh, uh, doesn't say you can't. So if you take the, the clatter gun, you march over drop a bomb, and then you can still shoot him with the strength four AP1 shots. Bombs away. You roll a five. Uh-oh. It's like all the bombs get released. Not all of them. Place two small three-inch blasts so that the center holes directly over the enemy unit. They each stat scatter D6. Okay, so it's either one strength five, strength four, sorry, one large strength four AP1 or two small strength three Sorry, guys. It's either one large blast, strength 4 AP1, or two small blasts, strength 4 AP1. And they both scatter. So I would say math-wise, it's better to get the 5 or 6 because you have chances of not scattering on two of them. And if it's most units, the small blast will still get, like, let's say on 25s now, like 12 to 16 hits. So if you get that twice, if you got two direct hits, you get like 32 hits. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, I don't know if it's worth the extra, what was it, 35 points to be able to do that bombing run. So it's 35 points to lose one movement, one extra impact hit, one extra wound in the bombing run. Probably not worth it, but I guess it depends on the army and the rest of your army list. Bolt throwers. Toughness 6, they used to be toughness 7 with everything. Toughness 6, 3 wounds, 55 points. Okay, now you start with light armor. Here the artillery is with light armor. Got it. They do have skirmishers, and they do have stubborn. And you can put up to 100 points. 100 points of rune on these guys. Wow. That's disgusting. Uh, same thing with the grudge thrower. Templates only hit models fully under and partially under a 4+. plus. Okay, so they brought that back from um, 7th edition. Uh, downvoting people. Does flying mean not marching more... Uh, it basically counts as a normal move. You can fly 9, which is basically if you had a movement forward, if you moved 4. If you 
fly 10 to 18 inches, it counts as if you marched. So it's like if you move it forward, you went 4.1 to 8 inches, basically. Uh, snack? No, I don't think they do. Uh, a handgun should definitely not have a fire, uh, volley fire. You should have like a first rank fire, second rank fire. You know, that would be cool. But no, I don't believe they do. I'll check that real quick. Uh, but I think I'm correct when I said that. Da, 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 da. Nope, no volley fire. They never did. I don't think they've ever had that. And that'd be gross if they did. Nope, no volley fire. Just for you. Templates on. Oh, by the way, could you do a video of what good terrain collection would be for rank and flex? Yeah, gladly. Um, I could do like a video of what I'm, of what I've collected. Uh, yeah, I do. I do remember that from sixth edition. Did I say eighth? Because eighth, it was just your hit, your hit. But and I remember in sixth and seventh, it was just like if you're partially under, even if it's like ninety nine percent of your base is covered, I think it's still a four up to see if you actually get hit. Uh. There's not much on YouTube or the internet in general, just general ideas. Yeah, gladly. I can do that. Grudge thrower. Basically a stone thrower. I think a stone thrower is eight and then four. So the under the hole, it's an eight. And then the large one is four. 95 points. Not too expensive. Basically the same price as a Bretonian trebuchet. I think the Bretonian treb is 100. Uh, so it's interesting that it's five points less. I wonder why it's five points less. Oh, hold on. Let me get to your artillery now. We're on to artillery. Where are you at? Aha! So we got the grudge thrower right there. Bolt thrower over there. And then we will go to whatever to the right. What's to the right? Cannons! Cannons is a flat 100 points. Now cannons nowadays, cannons are a little different than they used to be. They used to be disgusting. So in 6th and 7th edition, you had to do guess ranges. So you have to guess towards the direction, wherever you, the number you guess, let's just say 30, you put it 30 inches from the cannon, that is where your cannon is aiming for a shot. And then you roll the artillery and see if it scat or miss, misses by like two to 10 inches or misfires, whatever, and then it bounces from there. In eighth edition, you actually had to pick, or sorry, in Warhammer's Army's project, you had to actually put the target on a base and then it could scatter to the left and right and then you just draw a straight line from that. So it's not as snipey in uh, Warhammer's Army's project. But they brought it back to being snipey. Sadly. They brought it back to being snipey. But a regular cannon is only strength 8 AP 2. With armor bane 2. Uh, and it's only multiple wounds D3. So it's not just D6 wounds all the time. The great cannon is the one that's strength 10 AP 3. So even if you get hit by a cannon, you have a two-up armor save, and you get hit by a cannon, you still get a five-up save, which is crazy. Unless they roll a six, obviously, because armor bane. Mm, still does the same stuff. So uh, a regular cannon, all dwarf cannons are only going to be strength eight AP two. Okay, no strength ten. How many crew? Uh, so I don't think crew matters in this edition. It's not that it doesn't matter. You can still put the crew down and all that stuff and it looks cool. But uh, I think it's based on the number of wounds. So you can see, with my name everywhere, you can see it has three wounds. So that should just mean three crew. Uh, multiple wounds. So you're only doing D3 wounds. We'll see if there's any runes that give you like uh, extra strength or probably not extra wounds on your... Um, Damage roll is going to be gross, but you can spend up, again, up to 100 points on them. Organ gun. People hate it and love these, depending on if you were the dwarf player or not, because they just all used to auto-hit, which was gross. It's crazy how it doesn't actually talk about what an organ gun does here. It just says equipment, organ gun. They're all stubborn, 120 points. Toughness 7, 3 wounds. That is weird. Why doesn't it talk about... Is that going to be in the main rulebook? Bolt throwers, stone throwers, cannons, grape shot. Oh, yeah, don't forget about... Oh, it is. Organ gun is in here. That's interesting. Uh, so grape shot for the cannon is going to be strength 4 AP 1. And it should just be rolling them artillery dice. That's the number of hits. Okay, so that's cool. So cannons now, what you used to have to do when you did a grape shot, you'd have to roll to hit. So if your BS3, you're hitting on 4 with those shots. 
But now a grape shot is just the automatic hits. So if you roll, let's just say an eight, you get eight automatic strength four AP one hits. Pretty good. <clears throat> you misfired something different. Cool. Organ guns. The organ gun. Wow. So that means the. Okay. So the organ gun for dwarves used to be 24 inches. And it was like strength five AP one. And then the hell blaster for empire used to be. No, I might have this backwards. It was either the organ gun for dwarves was 30 or the hell blaster was 24. The hell blaster was 24 and the organ gun was 30. Now they have just made them the same exact thing. So an organ gun is range 30, strength 5, AP 1, with armor bane 2. Cumbersome, mover fire, multi barrel, blah, blah, blah. So strength 5, AP 1, armor bane 2. And it has the rule called multi barreled. And what are y'all talking about? Uh, wait, are partial hits still a thing? That would suck. Are partial hits really a thing? I know you talked about that, um, Starbreaker, but I didn't think they were, but maybe they are. Okay, we'll look that up later. How many crew? Yeah, Gracchus, that is, that's basically the whole thing. It's like bombing every turn. So if you actually get behind the enemy lines, it's pretty good. Yes, the cannons were super nerfed in WAP, but they were still good. Just depends on what you're shooting at. They weren't as great. They definitely got nerfed, though. But they were too good in earlier editions, so I understand. Correct. You do um, target at range. Correct. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, four up to hit. Nice. Okay, so back to organ gun. When you shoot the organ gun, if a misfire is rolled... So you roll two artillery dice before making any rolls to hit. The number of shots is equal to the total on the dice. If a misfire is rolled on one of them you minus one to hit. So if you have one misfire and a six, you're shooting six shots and an additional minus one to hit. So you could be long range and um, uh, one misfire. So you're minus two. If you roll on both of them, then you roll immediately. So you're only ever tooting, shooting, tooting. You're only ever rolling two artillery dice. I wonder if that also includes the hell blaster. So did the hell blaster get nerfed? Because you used to be able to shoot like all three shots and you roll up to three artillery dice, and you can shoot like 30 shots and some crazy stuff. So maybe they got nerfed a little. Okay. So a flame cannon. It just has the rule fire thrower. 125 points. Let's see if it still does what it used to do. It was really good versus uh, multi-wound models like ogres and trolls. It was gross versus them. So it's range 12, just like it used to be. And you would put the template at the edge of the 12, or up to the edge of 12, and then you roll the artillery dice to see how far for the flame cannon shoots. Column of fire. Place the near end so it touches the base of the model or the distance, right? Then we move the number of inches directly award, max range. Yep, basically what I just said. So within 12 inches, that's where you put the template down. And it's only strength five AP one with flaming attacks. It's not multi no multiple wounds anymore. Why would you take that? Why would you do that? What's the point of taking a flame cannon then if you lose that? That was the main reason you took the flame cannon was the D3 wounds. It's still great versus infantry. Still strength, strength 5 AP1, so you're wounding on like 2s or 3s versus most things. But you lose the D3 wounds. Hmm. Okay. Maybe there's a rune that you can take. All right. Interesting. Next. Okay, so now we're on to runic items. <clears throat> Creating a runic item. There are five categories. Weapon, armor, talismanic, talismanic, there you go, standard and engineering. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. To do this, simply choose the runes you want on a model. Write their names down. Add it to the cost. Okay, I can skip that. Rules of the runes. The rule of three, no single item can have more than three runes, period. No model can ever, no model can have more than three runes from each category, okay? No item can have a rune not intended for that item, of course. No two runic items in your army can be identical. This applies to items with only a single rune and to items with two or three runes, okay? So yes, you'd have to take, if you have one flaming artillery piece, you can't have another flaming artillery piece. It has to be flaming and something else. Rule of jealousy. 
Each master rune can only be chosen once. No item can have more than one master rune. And items, or sorry, only runes marked with an asterisk can be duplicated on the same item, combining together and increasing their effect. Hmm, okay. It's important to remember that runic items, can y'all see this? Scroll down a little bit. Single use runes can only be used once, once again. Spent cannot be used again. Okay, makes sense. Scroll to here. We're going to have to on, do some moving. All right. Weapon runes. Master rune, master rune of smiting. 75 points. Gives you uh, D6 multiple wounds special rule. Expensive. Probably won't be seen too much. It's pretty pricey. Uh, D6 wounds is really good, but then your character can get slapped around. Smiting, there you go. Master Rune of Scoff Black Hammer. 65 points. You always wound on a two up. Not bad. Always wound on a two isn't bad, but it's not ignoring armor saves. And it's just based on the AP of your weapon. So you could take a great weapon, but then just for the AP, but then you're if you're losing the armor save, not probably worth it. Master Rune of Alaric the Mad. No armor save. That's a good one. You can still take Ward and Regen. 45 points. Not bad. No armor save. So since armor saves got kind of worth uh, nerfed a little bit, don't know if that's worth taking. Dragon Slaying. When making against a Behemoth, you always wound on a 2-up, regardless of the toughness. Um, I don't know if that's worth it, only because there's not too many things with a behemoth and in like a 2,000 point army, you're only ever probably going to face one of those. So you'd have to you'd have to get your movement three dwarf way over there, and that player and a monster you, behemoth thing is going to move at least at least double what a dwarf can move. So you're probably never make to that combat. So also not worth it. Flight hand weapon once per turn during the shooting phase, you can shoot a. Wait, what? Oh, it can be thrown. Okay, so you're basically giving your... um. It's the Thor. It's the Thor build. Blah, 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 blah. Range 12, quick shot, magic test. It's strength of the user, so if you're able to buff the strength of your user, but it's no AP, which kind of sucks. Master Rune of Swiftness. First Strike Special Rule for 25 points. That's amazing. First strike in this edition is going to be huge, so if you just get it for 25 points, that is a very good rune right there. You're only going to take one of them because it's a master rune. What are y'all talking about? Anything? Uh, Arch template. Can the organ gun slam tannins even take runes? Let me go back. Did y'all notice? Did y'all see it? Let me look again. More machines, both throwers. No, they cannot. So organ guns and flame cannons cannot take... Oops, sorry. Organ guns and flame cannons cannot take runes. Hmm. I don't see why you take a flame cannon then. It doesn't seem worth it. Okay. Master Rune of Breaking. 25 points. A magic weapon carried by an enemy model that suffers one or more unsaved wounds from weapon scribe. Blah, blah, blah. It's destroyed. Wow, it's not even a four up. It's gone. It's just destroyed. Ooh, 25 points to just destroy magic weapons. That's pretty good. And that could even be done on, like, let's say Archeon is just walking around, and unless his item says it can't, it's like an unbreakable item, you can just, <laughs> you can have, like, a little runesmith that just how, somehow does a wound to him, and then, ah, oh no, the Slayer of Kings. Hilarious. Okay. Weapon... Okay, so here's those are the masters. So now these are just the regular uh, weapon runes. Can y'all not see that? Hold up. Let me adjust this. Just a little more. Oh yeah, this is the one where it's actually wider, so I'm gonna have to keep it like this most of the time. And I'll make myself smaller. Yoink. And hold on. Want y'all be able to see both at the same time. There we go. Perfect. Good enough. Okay. 
Rune of Pairing, 35 points. Uh, it's only if you're directed against the, the wielder of the Pairing Rune, so it's minus one to be hit. 35 points, pretty expensive, but if you're trying to build a tanky character that's going to accept a whole bunch of challenges, not bad. Minus one to hit. It's not minus one weapon skill, it's minus one to hit, and that's that's a pretty good, pretty nice when you're like weapon skill seven. So most things would be hitting you on uh, fives at minimum. Unless another character, obviously. Rune of Management. You don't get ward saves against this. So the runes, there's usually a whole bunch that are very army dependent if you're trying to tailor towards someone. But in a tournament, it's usually just like maybe three, maybe two or three from each like type for weapon, armor, whatever that you just take across everybody. So, Rune of Banishment, uh, Warp Spawn, no ward or regen. Rune of Fury, plus one attack characteristic for each Rune of Fury. So, you could do three Runes of Fury. Sounds great. I don't think you can stack Rune of Pairing. I'll have to go back and look based on the, the Rune rules. Grudge Rune. For each Grudge Rune inscribed on the weapon, its wielder may reroll a single roll, of, a single roll to hit of a natural one made during the combat phase. Uh, I don't know. Why would you ever take three, like for three Grudge Runes rerolling ones when you could just give your guy plus one attack? Oh yeah, duh. Sorry, it's the asterisk. I remember now. If it has the asterisk next to the rune, that means you can take multiple on the same one. Why would you want to spend sixty points? to reroll three natural ones when you could spend, let's just say, 50 points and get two extra attacks. Yeah, okay. I don't think the Grudge Rune would be taken very much. It seems pretty bad. If it was maybe 15 or 10 points, sure. Uh, but not not 20. Rune of Might, plus one strength characteristic. Y'all can see it it's still. Good, good. Plus one strength's really nice. Oh, sorry. I guess y'all can't see everything. Uno Memento. A little further. There you go. Okay. Rune of... So, plus one strength is pretty good. Uh, it's not extra AP or anything, so it's 20 points to wound easier, but it's not 20 points for more AP. So, Rune of Cleaving, though, is more AP. So, strength is decent. You could take... Uh, depending on what you're doing... Slayers always wound on fours, so you would never do Rune of Might. You would just do a whole bunch of AP or attacks. So you could do Rune of Cleaving and Fury a couple times. Um, let's see. For your big uh, king, usually don't build those two uh, DPS. You're usually more tanky, so you probably wouldn't be taking many of these except for the Rune of Pairing. Uh, Rune of Fire. You get Flaming Attacks. Rune of Speed. You get plus one initiative. Now, remember, all of these can go on champions. So you can spend 25 points on champions, so that's actually a pretty big deal. You could give your hammerer, like that initiative four hammer, who's now going to have, what, he has two attack space, so he'll have three if he gets charged, and then you give him a rune of fury, so you could have four of those uh, great hammer attacks from a champion. That's not bad. And you don't really need uh, more AP for the cleaving because you already have good cleaving. Rune of speed, plus one initiative. So, with champions and dwarves, you're going to make each dwarf champion actually pretty custom to what you want to do. That's pretty neat. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's go to the right. Armor runes. Uh, can you put these on shooting weapons? Um, I believe so. I don't see why not. Like a shooting champion, obviously the characters won't, the uh, attack won't matter. Yeah, I don't see why not. Like, why can't you, if this was ballistic skill or weapon skill, that'd be cool. Give a make like a a BS five uh, ranger or BS six ranger actually, or BS four um, other one. AP one is pretty good. I don't see why not. It doesn't. Oh no, this says hand weapon only for cleaving, as you can see right here, hand weapon only. Hmm. Hand weapon only for speed. But you can give plus one attack and some other things. So, yes, but only for some of the specific runes. Armor. You only scrapped upon armor. Blah, blah, blah. Iron Breakers at three plus. Rerolling ones, by the way. Yeah, I know. It's gross. It's gross, John. 
Uh, Master Rune of Adamant. Model wearing this has... What? It is 100 points, but you're just... I'm toughness 10. Good luck. You always need fives. Unless you just serve Slayer or whatever, but... That seems so expensive. 100 points. Yeah. Toughness 10. It used to be where you take... um. Iron, I think it was the Rune of Iron gave you plus one toughness, and then if you took a second one, it was like plus one toughness and plus one wound in 8th edition. Something, some combo like that. Master Rune of Grommel. You just get a flat two-up save, which can't be improved, which isn't great because most of your guys, your characters already come with a at least a three-up. So playing, paying 45 points for a two-up isn't, that's not good. Um, but it is a two-up re-rollable. It's pretty, or re-rolling ones. Which is not bad. Rune of Iron. Oh, look, here it is right here. Uh, you get plus one wound. It's not stacking, but you could take th uh, Rune of Iron once. And then, let's see, you could take Rune of Fortitude twice. So you could be, let's see, on the Shield Bears, you'd have six wounds flat. So you could be seven wounds with Toughness, uh, I think it's Toughness 5. I don't think it gives any Toughness. So you could be seven wounds at Toughness 7 again. Seven Toughness 7 wounds. But that's like 100 points. What, 3, 6, nine, 95 points? Rune of Preservation gives you immune to killing blow and multiple wounds. If the wearer suffers an unsaved wound, they lose a, oh, a single wound from those rules. You, you take one wound. So you can't be killing blowed, which is great. Uh, there will be character. If you have building a character that's supposed to take on other badass characters, might be good. Rune of Shielding, it does stack. So you can take three of these. So for 45 points, you get the 4-up ward, which I think is exactly what it was in 8th edition. Rune of Stone. Single use for each rune, you can reroll a single failed armor save. Not great, since it actually used to be, what, plus one of your armor save for the Rune of Stone? For 5 points, and it was like such an easy take. You basically take it every single time. Um, okay. Next. Talismanic runes. Can y'all see a little bit further? There we go. Y'all see any cool rune combinations? It seems like there's some nice ones out there so far, depending on what character or champion you want to put it on. So the Master Rune of Calm. Calm. The bear of the Master Rune of Calm can cast a bound spell, power level two. So you're rolling an eight, you're trying to roll a six or a nine to get the plus two. And nowhere does it say you can't put it on a wizard. If the bounce spell is cast with a casting result of 8 or more, the enemy wizards that are within 18 uh, inches of this model when attempting to cast must increase the casting value by 2. Okay. And if you get the 11, it's 36 inches. Wow. That's pretty sick. It's 50 points, which is pretty expensive. But for 50 points, you can make someone's spells go from like 7 and 9 to... Uh, 9 and 11. That's pretty gnarly. And when is this done? Uh, it doesn't say when. This is a bound spell. I have to look up when bound spells are used. Um, but either way, should be fine. Master Rune of Balance. Anvil of Doom or Rune Smith only. So once per turn, you get an extra D6 when dispelling, and you discard the lowest. Okay. So you're rolling 3d6 plus 1, 2, or 3, depending, and you're discarding the lowest. Not bad. Uh, I think I'd rather have the Calm Rune, though. Just to make every spell that they try and cast harder. For 15 more points. So it's either once per turn, an extra d6, or every turn. No, then maybe that is better. That's, that's close. That's close. Take both. Why not? Master Rune of Spite. There's a single wound enemy attack. The unit makes suffers a... Okay, so that's not good. Unless you did it on your tanky character, but then your your seven wound character is not great. They will just suffer seven strength, five hits to AP2. It's actually not terrible. Uh, not great. I don't like it. Rune of spell breaking. This one was disgusting. The bearer may use it instead of making a spell attempt. That's good. And there is no max of it, so yep, you could take two of these on your um, Rune Smith, and then your Rune Lord, you could have three of them. So you can just shut down the enemy spells. Uh, pretty, that's pretty. Okay, that's gross. 
No Dispel rolled acquired. Why even take the Rune of Calm to make enemy spells go twice? Because there's only usually one or two spells per enemy wizard that you actually care about. So if you can just spend, let's say, 100 points on spell breaking and just shut down those spells for at least two turns of shutting down the spells that you actually care about. Rune of Warding, two up ward once, not great. Rune of Luck, single use, reroll a failed to hit or wound or a failed armor save. 15 points, not great. If it was 10, maybe, to fit within some like other combinations that are probably going to be strong. Rune of the Furnace. So, so much reading of runes. Uh, the bearer has a 3-up ward, flaming attack. Oh, 3-up ward versus flaming attacks. Not great. You only ever take these... Usually you only ever take these 5.1s, so then you can take a similar combination on another character, and the only thing different is one has the Rune of Furnace and one has the Rune of Passage, at least in this case. Let's see what the Rune of Passage does. The bearer of the rune... Gains move through cover, and a unit gains the move through cover. That's pretty cool. You ignore penalties for going through terrain, basically. Okay. For five points, that's really good. I like that for five points. That's strong. All right, scroll up, and then we can do standard runes. So let's see if they have the Vanguard one. Ma these are all master, though, still. At least some of them. So this was a good one uh, back in the day. A unit carrying the standard. They have a 5-up ward against wounds suffered. In addition, while within 6 inches of the standard, friendly units have a 6-up ward versus shooting. Uh, maybe it wasn't that one. That was great. There was one that was like any unit within 12 or 6 inches or 8 inches of the bear is stubborn. Let's see if we get to that. Master rune of Strommy Redbeard. 75 points. Any friendly unit within the command range gains an additional plus 1 combat res. Mm. don't know if it's worth it as dwarves because you're most likely trying to just hold the line and you hope you get pushed back. You hope they charge you, push back, and don't follow up so then you can shoot them. Interesting. Master Rune of Hesitation. Let's get that. And Rune of Confusion. There we go. Master Rune of Hesitation. An enemy unit that charges the front arc of a unit carrying their standard inscribed does not count as having charge for the purpose of the weapon they're using. Okay. So, you charge with lances. You don't get that. Wait, wait, wait. What does it say? Does not count as having charge for the purpose of choosing which weapon to use or any special rules it may have. So, if you, if you have that rune and you get charged by lances, they have to use hand weapons? That's kind of funny. I like that. Note they still count as being charged, so they still get the initiative and all that other stuff. But they don't they can't use a lance or a spear, obviously, or whatever special army weapon that there's out there. Okay. Rune of confusion. An enemy unit that charges the front arc of a unit carrying the standard must make a disordered charge. That's pretty good too. Hmm. So one of those two is probably going to go on your um uh, Iron Drakes, because I don't see the minusing the charge distance, probably because charge distances are so low anyways now. You gain fear, not bad. An additional combat, so that's like um, Battle Banner, War Banner, War Banner. Strollers, there you go. Any unit carrying a standard described gets the Strollers, or sorry, gains Vanguard. So if you want to build a close combat army, you take several uh, runes, one with like just the strollas. You take one with the strollas and the courage, and then like the strollas and the fear or something. So then you could have three units just running up the field. Not bad. Unit carrying the rune of courage automatically passes fear or tests, fear or terror test. That's okay. Most like you have such light leadership anyways. I don't know if that's worth it, but it at least lets you take a combo of the same rune you like of these standards with something else. Engineering runes. Okay, guys, we're almost done. We're almost done. Hold on. John, I don't know if you noticed, but I think you're a little... Oh, you must have just started it late. You might have zoomed back. But thank you for all the... Uh, I'm sure you'll read this later, too. But thank you for um, uh, commenting and adding in those. 
Belgar, thank you. Hey, guys, t say where you're from. Get some likes up in the chat. I hate having to say that stuff. Actually, I don't have to say anything. But it does make me feel good when you like and comment. It does make me feel appreciated. Uh, I don't need your money. It's all good, man. Y'all do your thing. 5++ plus plus seems strong. Yes, Confusion plus Hammers. What's the Confusion one again? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, that's one where you want to get charged. Um, uh, yes, that's going to be very strong. Disordered, so you're going to do Rune of Confusion. Sorry, I can read it for y'all. You make Disordered Charge with your hammers, so they get Disordered Charge, you get plus one attack and initiative. Yikes! That's going to be a cool combo. So hammers might be slapping people later. Can y'all see this? Engineering? Excellent. Cannon only. If a cannon is inscribed with this rune and it loses its last rune, you can basically sabotage the cannon to explode. The enemy unit in base contact with this model suffers D6 strength 5 AP2. So <clears throat> if you know the enemy is going to have a lot of scouting units or fast cav or flyers that are going to get in your flank but are usually die kind of easily, you do what you can, maybe grape shot here or there if you can, if they don't make a charge or something, and then you get charged and you die. You explode the cannon, so you're just throwing shrapnel everywhere. I like that. Master Rune of Disguise. It's not great, but it's it's definitely fun and fluffy. Master Rune of Disguise. Is it fluffy for a dwarf to purposely sabotage their craftsmanship? Hmm, okay. I guess if you're just going to die, you might as well. Mas or have it, instead of like... uh. It's like what people used to do, like you um, burn your own crops or you destroy your own artillery pieces because you can't take them and run and flee. You just go ahead and destroy them so they can't be used by the enemy. Makes sense. Uh, always consider to be behind full cover. I'm guessing full cover is minus two to be hit. Rune of Skewering. Bolt throwers only. A bolt thrower nowadays, guys, only does multiple wounds two. It's not D3 anymore. A bolt thrower gets plus one strength. In addition, no, no armor save. I think it's only AP 1 or... I think it's AP 2. Let me look up a bolt thrower. I guess this matters. And this can be under War Machine. And then under War Machine, it'll be under bolt thrower. War machine 223. Yes, if y'all saw that meme going around of like, Oh, look like the rule book is out in the wild. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> okay. Bolt throwers. Strength 6, AP 3 already. So it's going to make it, and it's, multiple, multiple, it's only multiple wounds too. So you're not going to be able to shoot through monstrous infantry. Let me make sure about that. Uh, both are that can shot through multiple submarine machines. Both are this. Yeah, and it still gets reduced down to... The strength still loses. Okay. I'll have to look to see if it's... Does that... Maybe it can still go through monstrous infantry. So just like cannons and um, bolt throwers back in the day, if it didn't get through the first rank, if it doesn't kill the thing, it stops there. Maybe bolt throwers have something where it still gets to go through. So basically... Ah, okay. So it's only multiple wounds two, but it has the through and through rule. One hit per rank, including the rear rank, even if it's incomplete. If the bolt thrower lies in the front arc. Okay. One hit per file if the bolt thrower lies in the unit's front arc. Wow. Each hit after the first. Okay. So that means, based on what I just read, and if anyone ever saw this, let me know. Yeah, they don't now, Christian. That's what I'm reading. It seems interesting. So, it starts out at strength 6 against a toughness 4 ogre. You wound the ogre. It fails its save if it gets one. It now has one wound left. Now you're strength 5, because let's say the ogres are 3 deep. You get 3 hits, and you're shooting the front rank. You get 3 hits on the ogre unit. The first one does 2. The second one, you need a three to wound. If it goes through, still same AP, does a second one. So now that ogre is dead, and now you have a strength four bolt thrower hit on the third guy in the rank. 
So it's going to kill one and a half guys if it's three ring. Interesting. Okay, I kind of like that. So no Christian, you're not going to be able to. There was a game where uh, Christian and I were playing against two awesome brothers. And uh, I was, I don't remember what army I was playing, but he was playing high elves because that's what he plays. And uh, the Clayton brothers, that's who we played against. One of them had a Minotaur unit. And they turned their flanked on the Minotaur to like get a really good charge off next turn, basically. And Christian just took his bolt thrower, shot it down the flank of the Minotaur, rolled a hit, hit. No armor saves back then. D3 wounds, three wounds. Headshot Minotaur. Needed a, I think it was a four. Needs a, um, you needed a two. Needs a three to wound, wounds. D3 wounds, five or six. So three wounds. Headshot Minotaur. Did it again. So a bolt thrower just went headshot, 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 right through three Minotaurs. And it was, he was laughing so hysterically. I wish I had that on video. Oh my gosh. That was one of the best cackles I've ever heard Christian do. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, sorry to continue on. Both throwers seem still good. It's just different now. Um, Rune of Forging. Rune of Forging's great. Uh, da, 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 da. A War Machine may reroll a single misfire. That's, that's an amazing one for almost anything. And it says it's only single use. Interesting. So it used to just be flat. Now it's single use, but it has the asterisk. So that means you can take multiple of these. So on your basically anything that rolls an artillery die, you're going to want to take at least one of these. But that means you have to take a, one of these other ones below, or I guess other ones below to uh, be able to take it multiple times on multiple artillery pieces. Rune of Burden, you get flaming attacks. It used to only be five points. Rune of Reloading. So I read this one earlier and I was shocked that it's only five points. Look at this thing. A war machine inscribed with the Rune of Reloading can shoot every turn, even if it misfired or malfunctioned during its previous turn. Like, why would you not always take that on every single war machine? That obviously can misfire. It's five points. Like, you don't even need the Rune of Forging necessarily, because if you don't explode and you roll on the Black, fire or black Powder um, chart, oh, I can't shoot this or next turn. If you have the rune of reloading, it seems like you can still shoot it. So weird. Stalwart rune. Uh, oh, let me scroll down a little bit. A bunch of war machines can't take rune. You're totally correct. Totally correct. Uh, stalwart runes uh, may claim plus one combat result points. All right. If you're just trying to do like the same combination, it's just another one that's just like you take. One with the Rune of Reloading and one at the Rune of Forging. And then you do Rune of Forging and Stalwart. And then you take Reloading and Stalwart. And there you go. You have them all. And that is the, that's it for Dwarves. But let's go to back to up to Army Comp real quick. And then I'm going to eat some food because I'm hungry. Army Comp. Sorry if this is messing with y'all. Army Comp, Army Comp. Where's Army Comp? There it is. Okay. Uh, go up a little bit and a little wider. Haha. -ha. Okay. So you can only have one king, anvil, or rune lord per 1,000 points. And since at most tournaments, I think most tournaments we're going to be doing 1999 plus one. So you can't double up and do all sorts of crazy shenanigans. Uh, let's see. As many Thanes, Runesmiths, Runemiths, or Demon Slayers and Dragon Slayers as you want, and Engineers. But I think hopefully Rule of Three becomes just kind of a common practice throughout the um, throughout the gaming community, especially at least for tournaments, because you don't want to you don't want to see what let's say you have a two thousand point army, you don't want to see a thousand points of Dragon Slayers. Like you don't, I mean, well, some people do. Alex would love to have ten Dragon Slayers or ten. Uh, demon slayers just running out by themselves killing stuff um, and that would probably be kind of strong because they're all unbreakable and they're all probably hard to hit and everything but you don't want to see that stuff in like an actual lore based or not lore based but a tournament scene the meta just gets crazy you don't want to see that core you have to take you don't have to take anything 
if a general if your general is a king, one of your long beards become core, so that's good. They're normally special. Mm. And warriors aren't that bad now. I mean, you might even just see hope warriors instead of long beards. In some editions, like WAP, you had to take attacks. So if you wanted to take a unit of long beards, you had to take a unit of warriors. Um, Whirlers and Thunders are both good, especially if you put some runesmiths in them to give them Armor Bane 2 on top of their already um, AP. Special. One unit of hammers per king or thane taken. So you could take one king and one thane and then take two units of hammers. And based on what we've discussed, what I've read, and what y'all are clearly talking about in the chat, hammers seem like a really strong unit. So you could easily take two units of hammers and then just one unit of iron breakers. And that's like, those are your two, one anvil and two hammer hitting units. Um, war machines. Zero to three war machines chosen from the following list per thousand points. So at a thousand points, you can only have three of those war machines total. So at 1999, you can still only so you could take three ball throwers, you could take three gutch throwers, you could take three cannons. It's not bad, not too spammy, but still not great. But that's that's dwarves. You know you got to expect gun lines versus dwarves. Rare, uh, rain, rangers rangers are rare. I thought they used to be special. Why did they make rangers rare? Oh, sorry, I forgot. In special, you have miners, slayers, and gyrocopters. Duh, sorry. But you saw people, there's no limit on gyrocopters, and they can be taken in single units, So, which is basically always. So that's where you saw the list of like 10 of each just going crazy. Uh, rare, iron drakes and gyro bombers. I do like the whole uh, iron drake detachment with the regiment of iron breakers. It'll be a cool combo. I don't know what's better if you just take more iron breakers slash another unit of hammers instead of the iron drakes. Um, varied list and general who's running the army dependent, in my opinion. So at a thousand points, you can take two organ guns. So that's why you don't do two thousand points because then you could take four organ guns or four flame cannons or two of each or three and one, whatever. Mercenaries. Someone asked me about mercenaries. Uh, up to 20% of your army's points can be spent on mercenaries. I think that's going to be dependent on um, uh, maybe some other book that's coming out. I'm not really sure about mercenaries yet. Let me look about that. Hold on. Mercenaries. Probably won't talk about it in here, will it? Oh, well. Mercenaries. 173 and 2... Why is, why is everything in 170? You know what? That's just going to say to go to 279. So we're just going to go to 279. That's what we're going to do. Skip the first one that just says, look on 279. Uh, single arm, uh, uh. So basically, there are mercenaries in other army books or arcane journals or whatever you want to call them. They will have basic, probably the special rule mercenary somewhere in their unit uh, rules. And that means you can take them from any other army that's allowed to take mercenaries. That's how this is reading. But they do misbehave, and then they have to roll on a chart in case they like are like, F off, you know, either we're, you give them stupidity and all sorts of other things in this chart. So that's interesting. Allies, uh, you can ally in the infamy list. You can ally in Empire, Bretonia, and High Elves. Dwarves are going to ally with High Elves, eh? So luckily at tournaments, it's probably going to be no allies. Mercenaries might be permitted, but probably not. I think based on, uh, at least right now, there might be some cool events where you can do whatever you want. There might be some events where you can't spam, but you can take allies. Uh, it's really going to be a trial, uh, trial and error kind of environment right now. One, because it's a new game and it's very, there's, there are many similarities between older editions, but there's a lot of changes, especially with army comp. So a lot of people aren't going to know how to build certain lists. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. We're starting with certain restrictions like rule of three, no allies, uh, 1999 plus one. And um, that's the majority. Oh, and you can't go wider than 10. 
We're trying to make a rule where you can't be wider than 10 because still, I'm not going to talk about the whole, I could go off that 100 wide again, but basically, you know my qualms with that. Um, but those are the, I think, the four basic, easy general consensus that most people will agree on. Um, so thanks, guys. That's all the door stuff. If there's anything else, just scroll back and you could find it. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the Richmond Opened. Um, Adepticon is going to be doing the Old World, so that sold out in like 10 minutes. Um, I sadly didn't even get on it, so I'm on the waiting list right now. Hopefully I get on because uh, I am going to Adepticon. So if you're there, come up, say hi. We can talk, shoot some shit about the Old World, whatever. Uh, I'll be at the Richmond Open. I'm helping run that event. It's another GT that's in May 3rd through 5th. It's on a Saturday, Sunday, five games. And the prizes are going to be awesome. So they're much even better than Nova in terms of um, what everyone gets. So obviously, and, and I'll be running Nova uh, GT again for the old world. So just keep an eye out. The old world is going to explode. Your community is going to explode. I'm running um, a game day slash demo day at Battlegrounds on the 27th, which is in Midlothian, Virginia. If you have a community or even if you don't, just put a flyer somewhere talking about the old world that you want to meet up and play. You will find players, uh, especially now all these people. It's just the nostalgia feel, which GW is capitalizing on. And that's great. I'm cool with it. So uh, good luck. Roll some sixes and stay square.